Hello, my friend. I have just gotten back from Georgia. I've been over there for an entire week. As a matter of fact, my grass grew a good foot before we could get home. So I was spending most of the day yesterday cutting it. As you know, uh, I've had Keith Rucker and Mike Wiggins out here helping me with the construction on this building, some on and off, uh, for the past couple of years. And anytime I can return the favor, I do. And I told Mike Wiggins, since he is right in the middle of trying to get his building covered where he can finish it up if in the event he can select a date for me to help him i'll be glad to do that so that's exactly what this trip was all about for the most part we got a lot done i started it off by going to keys first and i was just going to spend the night and we were going to piddle around the shop and try to get some things done while i was there that he might need a second pair of hands for Boy, did that turn into a major fiasco. If you watched Keith's video on the Tally Ho capstan, I'm fixing to plug in a lot of unedited video because I just didn't have the time. That's why this video is going to be so long. Uh, normally, I wouldn't do that. And unfortunately, it's not about molding and casting. Needless to say, I want to I'll update you with this. I've got some other video that I took while I was on the trip, but I'm not going to put that on this one that I think you'll find very interesting. I was thinking just this morning, you know, Keith, Mike, and myself should have a, another channel called the Amish Trio, where we go to each other's house and erect things. That didn't sound right. Build things. And I think it would go over pretty well. We got a lot done at Mike's after I got there. It rained the first day, so we spent our time on his CNC router. And I experimented on a pattern that I have for a customer out of Little Rock. We still need to do a little tweaking on that, but the machine did a beautiful job on it. Um, and I'm anxious to get the that done where we can get him taken care of. Also, um, I'm working on a pattern for a lady up in uh, I believe Pennsylvania and we're going to try to probably do a video just on that job because there's so many pieces to it even blacksmithing I might even have to get my buddy Derek Melton involved in this to, <laughs> to, to help me finish the job I don't know yet let's cut this here and go ahead and get that video going because this is going to be a ridiculously long one yeah I couldn't uh, couldn't let her run free out here guys she hit this pond last night. By the way, guess where I'm at? I just wanted to show you guys one of the gears in the flat belt pulley that I made for Keith last year. Was it's it? probably been two, two, two years ago. Two years now. ago, yeah. But anyway, I am looking at this thing in person, and it's a lot bigger, a lot bigger uh, in person than what I thought it was. Like twice the size. Yeah, yeah. You made I made I made patterns for both of these and sent them to you. You cast them and then yeah. I brought them back and, and machined them out. But yeah, both of those are, are some of your castings. Windy Hill Foundry at its finest. Well, that's a beautiful machine. Yeah, you also. Well, we were no, going to. No, you didn't. Those are those are the originals. Yeah. Because I was able, to, I was going to get some cast because I didn't have the originals, and then we found I found the guy had the originals. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that you cast on this. Right. <laughs> nice face shield holder. Yeah, it's, uh, I've got a couple of jobs coming up for it soon. Hopefully, I can get them worked in here before too long. Yeah. Uh,
Testing. Say again. Testing. Just talk. Just count to ten. One, two, three, four. I can't count to ten. <laughs> <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine, One, ten. One, two, three, four. That'll work. And uh, I have really examined it. I still think it just comes off the top, but we're going to have to put a little bit more. We're going to turn up the heat a little bit more, put a little more pressure on it, what do you think? Yeah, it's going to come off one way or the other. If that's not the way it's supposed to, we'll, <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah, and I did talk to Leo, and he's aware of the situation. We also know that we've got a casting that's broken or cracked on the top here. Guys, it's very likely that this cover's going to break. And uh, if it does, I'm no foundry guy. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going to get in yeah. And I have a feeling that we're going to have a broken cover before we're done. But I, I just don't know what else to do. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit of pressure on this. Uh, we're probably going to apply some heat to it. And we're, like I said, something's coming apart. And hopefully it's, it's the way it's supposed to be. I'm going to step over here and make sure my dog doesn't run into the danger zone. Yeah. Uh, actually, a uh, dollar went back to the house. Oh, she did? Yeah. Okay. She good. wanted to go be with Mama. She's, She's smart. She, <laughs> she saw all this going on. like, I'm getting yeah. out of there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Let's see what happens. I will note, I will note too, that this is, this, it's not dangling, but I, I, I've got it picked up just enough so that as I'm pressing this, there's room for it to go down. Yeah, and uh, you've got a little little weight there to help out. That's right. So do you need me to steady this as you pump it? I guess. Are you ready for me to pump it? Yeah. Here we go. We're pressing down. On Actually, the... we probably ought to pick this up a little more. All right. Yeah. It's something good. There you go. Tap on that just a little bit. It ain't gonna hurt it. Yeah, that crack's opening up. I saw that. Keith, what if you stick your torch right in here directly on that outside? On the end, you know, where your brake is. Have you tried it like that? You could get your heat right up on that hub. It's gonna blow out on
Actually, he don't need that anyway. Nah. All right, let me, uh, I'm gonna shut the camera off and let's figure out what we got going on here. I was afraid this was Doing it from different sides and see if that won't hurt. I think I'm in front of your camera. Do you want to move it? Uh, let me. I'm gonna get some penetrating oil too. Okay. Hey, your electrical tape's not. Yeah. Working that, out. That cord is in. I should have brought my foil tape. Yeah, you should have. Put the little penetrating oil in there. Can't hurt. <laughs> Soak it and then try the other side. You can do that. Oh, man. Uh, <sighs> man. 
broke my darn yeah. flea market chisel How here. How did I do that? Broke a crowbar yesterday. <laughs> Fine, let me go get another one. Yeah. 
Those were hidden up. All right, let's uh, see if there's a pin up in there. You press them. Hey, little bit. Well guys, I looked, there is no pin that goes through this. It looks like the, the back of this hole is just going right up against the shaft that's in there. So uh, we've got a, another puller on this thing and we're going to get the torch out and we're going to heat it up. If we have to, we'll turn it red and we're just going to see if we can get it off. That's all I know to do now. All I know to do is get some heat going.
So Dollar took a dip in the pond last night, so we're just having to keep her on a short leash nearby. It's good luck. All right. Let's see. Let's speed, yeah. I got you. So we are out here at the museum. I got this loaded up in the hydraulic press. It is moving. So uh, that's, that's good. Uh, it took a little pressure to kind of get started, but it is coming out.
heavy. I don't think you can uh, make them much lighter. Yeah, we got that shaft out of here. Yeah, yeah, it definitely helped. Kind of roll it in there. I guess. You do that? I'll do my very best. Uh, yeah. What does that do, General? That is a capstan off of the whole sailing. I thought it was a capstan. I said, that's what it looks like. Well, I'll be darned. We have yeah. been working for two days trying to get it apart. Well, I'll be. And we finally just got the last piece out of it on the hydraulic press over here. Now, I always wondered how, were these things ratcheted or did they just turn on the. So, there's basically there's a base. Yes. Top. There's a stem that goes up through it. The, the, this is key to the top and the bottom. Okay. This is just supposed to rotate on there. There's, a, there's a round gear yes. here and a bevel gear on the side. On the top, you put a crank in there and you turn that, and this just rotates on that shaft. All right. And there's there's no pawl to keep it from going backwards or anything, or is yeah, there? There is. This little ratchet right here goes flips over on either side. I'll it's be going. Center and the bottom, and it'll drag up over the one in this direction. But it won't go back. So it'll okay. go back one click. One click. But it's there's probably, I don't know, probably 10, 8 or 10 little lugs, lugs in there. So you're okay. never going farther than that. So. You got a bronze bush in there. Is that what that yeah. is? A bronze bush with a little bit of rotation. Well, I'll be done. Well, my friends, it looks like I'm not going to use a whole hour up after all. I want to uh, thank Mr. Greg Tucker. He was the muscle in the last part of the video helping us get that loaded back in. Uh, Keith's truck. I don't know why we couldn't do it. It was like 40 pounds lighter without the shaft in it We seemed to load it in the truck just fine before we took it apart But anyway, Greg if you're watching uh, It was great talking to you and great to meet you and, and we do appreciate your help now the rest of this video is at Mike Wiggins uh, several hours to the east near Savannah and we are putting up rafters purlins and hurricane straps as we go and hopefully we have mike far enough along to where he is only days away from putting the tent on the top of this we uh ended with doing the soffits just on one side and he had to be at work the next day along and i needed to be getting back uh as i said earlier we started off getting there a day late because of the project we were doing for keith and it uh the first full work day we had to do anything at Mike's turned into rain, but it worked out. Uh, if it hadn't been for the rain, I believe we would have had all the soffits up and possibly a couple sheets of tin up. I don't know. Mike's wife, Kelly, had she been helping him along? And honestly, if she hadn't been there on the days I was there passing stuff up as we keep dropping it, it would have taken a lot longer to do. Next week, I'm going to try to include some video I took at the Old Depot Museum in Selma, Alabama. I stopped there on our way back. I think you'll find it interesting because it's foundry related. I had been wanting to go there for several years, and we finally just said, you know what, let's make time and go now. Well, I'll tell you more about that next week. This is good enough. Hey right, guys, so for those of you that have been asking about Mike Wiggins, he's not dead. <laughs> he's he's alive and kicking. Uh, I keep having people ask me, what's happened to Mike? And he's right here. But he has had a lot of work on his plate to try to catch up with. And keep in mind, he does have another job. So it's difficult to do this and YouTube videos. Yeah. But he said he's going to try to get back into it. I don't know when. I'm not going to say soon, but uh, he's not through with YouTube. Every day I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike's got quite a collection here. Uh, I'm not going to go uh, combing through it, but uh, I'm glad to see he's building a, a really nice building the house, and I'm anxious to see all this when he's done with it. Yeah, it's, it's everywhere right now. And if uh, I haven't said... This is one of my other pattern makers here. He, uh, he, he's just invested a lot of money into a CNC wood router. Uh, and if you have a file that is already able, that's able to be 
readily loaded right in his machine, uh, he can fix you up. Yep. So, and Mike, his dad uh, was a pattern maker, and Mike's familiar with what draft angle is and fillet radiuses and all that good stuff. So, yeah, you, uh, if you need an experienced pattern maker, we got one right here. Yep, yeah, bring it on. See y'all guys. Yeah, uh, Mike and I got quite a bit done in the, over the last, what, three days? The rain was very intense the first day we were supposed to do this, so we ended up uh, messing around with a pattern for a customer in Little Rock, uh, trying to proof that out. And the last few days, we've been able to concentrate on knocking these rafters out and getting all this ready to get tin on. We have the soffit up on this side. As you can see here, uh, we were able to just build these soffits in a uh, 12 foot length. And they're roughly about two feet deep and we were able to lift the things up in sections at a time and screw them in place. Turned out to be an all day job. I lied to his wife. I told her we'd have all this done before this evening and it, it, it didn't happen. And this is the other side. We did not get to do the soffits on this side. Uh, we spent probably half the day experimenting, seeing what works best. Uh, and I gotta tell you guys, Mike and his wife Kelly then have done most of the work down here on this. And it's a, as uh, you can see, it's quite a big job for just two people. You like this dollar? Watch that speed bump. Yeah, I know, there's several of them. They left a black mark in here. Motorcycle. Mm -hmm. Punks. Dollar, don't you even think about it. So I'm fixing a plant 
a peach tree that we uh, bought off the side of the road in Georgia out here. And the more I think about it, the more I look at it, that shady character, I think he just sold us some marijuana. Uh, 